Just curious. Why'd you run? I was scared. So you went to Danielle's apartment? She's... She was an old friend of mine. I was just looking for someone, anybody, that I remembered. That's all. Did you tell her or anyone about this place? I don't know what this place is. And you and I said we're close. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Dark Matter Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4, The Box, Episode 3, and The Quarter, Episode 4, that is on Apple TV+. And a little apologies to you for this being a little bit too late, but the holidays got there. <laughs> Things got in the way a little bit, but we're going to be on track. And next week, we'll be doing two episodes, five and six together. So keep that in mind when you send in feedback or if you feel the need to send in feedback. But in this case, we're covering episodes three and four. So episode three, the synopsis is Leighton Amanda show Jason his groundbreaking invention. Daniela and Jason to throw a dinner party. So we're going to start off with that one, do a really quick idea and overview of our thoughts and what's going on within the the story itself. And then we'll move right into episode four, which we'll give the synopsis then. So uh, initial thoughts, Steve, on episode three. I liked it. I enjoyed the box. Um, and I thought I like when, when they get to that whole interrogation scene, um, uh, I thought I was reminded that, you know, all I know about, Police is TV shows and movies, but don't they call the interrogation room that the police, they call it the box in TV shows. So I thought yeah, that was they kind do. of, a, it's an interesting, uh, you know, to have both those things going on there. We have the box, which is Jason's Schrodinger's cat box. And then we have the box, which is the interrogation <laughs> room that they kind of got him in Yeah, there at, at the end or towards the end of the episode. So I thought that was kind of a, kind of a cool uh, little linking it, but yeah, it was, it was really good. The editing on that going between the dinner party and the questioning of Jason, to, uh, of Jason prime was, was really cool. Just the way it went back and forth and they didn't even bother to use the snap because we knew, what was going on, Mm -hmm. you know, but then they went right back to using the snap again after they finished that, those scenes. So I I was, I was glad to that because I liked, I like hearing that snap and knowing that, okay, we're changing, you know, kind of changing positions here, but yeah, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it just the same too. I I love the idea, like what you stated, but it's a box within a box at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, and it's really what the whole plot line was within the episode itself. You know, after finding Jason and Danielle's party, following the heartbreaking way she was killed by Don, woo, mm-hmm. and he's brought back to Velocity, and then he's interrogated, and they have to go through this whole scenario. I thought it was really good. It, it was kind of something out of, you know, uh, if comedic wise, it would be Brooklyn Nine Nine Nine, Nine Nine, or uh, NCIS, but it was more the uh, dramatic extent of yeah. Uh, the uh the show itself and i did enjoy it and on top of that and going back to where jason too is with with daniela and everything else there's a lot at stake at this point as layton says and they all work too hard now to become exposed by the police who are investigated by the company now so the police is now involved in that world at that point where jason one is and oh where jason yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. We're, we're Jason one. Yeah, Jason one. Jason one is is in the the two. <laughs> so you're right. The police are now have finally gotten involved. They're asking questions. You know, and Amanda comes in, and and this was a, a point for me that I had to watch it twice, and it kind of bleeds a little bit into the next episode. Was I was kind of unsure about Amanda's 
like loyalties. I'm still not sure about Ryan's loyalties either. I mean, he seems yes. to be Ryan, Ryan too. I mean, uh, Ryan too, he seems to be genuinely that he didn't realize he was, he was making life hard for Jason one, mm-hmm. you know, there in the two world when he says, Oh, it's my fault that Daniela was killed, you know, but then he, he, he's able to coax out of him kind of the fact that it was using the drugs, shutting off the brains, you know, prefrontal cortex, um, but then at the end, you know, when Amanda pulls him into the box and she gives him the drugs, I kind of was wondering, I was like, well, is this, is this real? Um, and, and we're going to get, when we talk about the corridor, I'll get into more of this, uh, Amanda and Jason one's kind of relationship of what's happening. But of course in, you know, in, uh, uh, episode three, she, when he's asking her questions about, you know, like how long have they lived together? What's been going on? She says, well, they've been living together off and on for a year that they woke up in bed together after he went to see Daniela, you know, the night when Jason two went to see Daniela and told mm-hmm. her this was probably gonna be the last time she ever see sees him, you know, and, yeah. and then we find out that. So, so it's, it's really, it's, it's really an interesting, that, that episode three is really interesting. We get a lot of answers of things of, finding out that as as Jason 1 is kind of put, piecing it together and he realizes that Jason 2 figured out how to make the box bigger you know and, and Layton says well you developed adaptive um you know something about adaptive um structures and stuff to make it change almost and, like the, an AI yeah yeah that it's almost it's almost like an AI but it really was it was the the insertion of that lavender fairy drug that ryan made for them that was the key because you had to shut off the brain you know disarticulating is is the word they use that the the brain would disarticulate if you knew it was passing through you know different worlds certain synapses so, in the brain to that way it sheltered it in you mm-hmm. were consciousness of where you're going at it's kind of like giving your brain a trip Mm -hmm. In that time, so that way when you show up, you're cognitive of what you're doing. Right. And at the time, right. But when you transition, you're not. Like you can't you can't be transitioning. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So and we'll talk more about that when we get into the corridor because they really delve deep into that. But I thought it was interesting there at the end, like, you know, he kind of sealed his own fate when he starts talking about the fact that he's not there, Jason. And he's like, you see him reading the journals and he goes, Oh. He figured it out, and then suddenly, you know, Amanda gets that that moment of revelation where she real, realizes this is not our Jason, and yes. she leaves. And then, you know, they pull Ryan in, and Ryan, you know, because he told Ryan all this stuff about not being being a different Jason, yeah, yeah, being a different Jason, and and so it, it really was was really cool to see everybody's kind of wheels turning and stuff in <laughs> the, the the two world as they slowly figured out that oh, we have the wrong Jason, but you know, Layton still thinks. Well, but, you know, some part of you is him, so you should be able to figure this out, you know, so. It's it's Leighton's idea of that Jason is this genius, mm-hmm. regardless of no matter what universe he's in. And he's able to figure this out to make it work to get from place to place, which we do see eventually mm-hmm. in episode four to some degree. And I think... Uh, yeah, when we get into that, that's going to be a strong point because mm-hmm. he starts to figure out things a lot more in episode four. But in this one, I find it interesting that, you know, uh, Jason to now with Daniela and Charlie is, is just throwing money around like crazy. Yeah, you know, that part at the beginning where he gets the second bottle of wine and she's like, well, this is $100 a bottle. We can't afford this. Yeah. And I, you start to see the cracks of where of things that he doesn't know. Yeah. You know, and then like he's got to go through social media because this dinner party is going to happen. He better be able to, to talk. Oh, his yeah. Way yeah. Especially things. with the skateboarding crap and everything mm-hmm. else with his son. He's trying to get in on Charlie's life. And he's trying to like he's trying to figure it out, and he's usually using social media through the phone to look at people's names to associate with people he didn't know in his own universe right. that are involved in this one, yeah, and just to manipulate and just to get where he needs to be, yeah. Well, yeah. and just and and you know, lucky enough that he saw that hotel name when he was browsing through 
the history. So, cause she's, you know, I, I really thought Daniela was starting to kind of figure it out at one point when, <laughs> when she asked that question about the hotel and then he yeah. comes up with it. And so that kind of allays her fears a little bit. So we'll, we'll see um, going forward, if there's any more suspicion from uh, Daniela uh, about Jason too, or not, or if he's, if he's alleviated all those, those fears. Yeah. But that uh, the dinner party was really kind of cool. The way he kind of manipulated Charlie into being there, you know, uh, and then he's like, he asked Charlie, the Blair woman who's coming, what's her last name? So he can look her up and see that she's a lawyer and, you know, start to <laughs> kind of figure out who she is. And these people, like you said, that he he doesn't know in this reality. Um, so, yeah, so it's 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 going to be interesting going forward to see how we do that, how he navigates these waters, kind of. Yeah, it, it's he's treading lightly at this point. In my opinion, mm -hmm. as a character, Jason two and Jason one's life. And eventually I have a funny feeling these people are going to catch up. Yeah, uh, I would I, say Daniela, Charlie and Ryan are going to factor it in because they know him so well. Yeah, because he's he's doing things that are not, you know, not Jason, not Jason. things. Right. And especially in the next episode, he's he's going to do some more things that are going to yeah. that are going to make people suspect or should start making people suspicious. And so we'll see how that goes and whether Amanda, whether Daniela and Charlie are able to make that intuitive leap, because remember, you know, Layton and Amanda are able to make that intuitive leap because they know about the box. Yes. You know, but Charlie and Daniela don't know about the box. And so I don't know if they could, if there's going to be a logical way they can make that leap or if they're going to try to find some, you know, some explanation, some real world explanation, like, did you, you know, hit your head? Did you have a stroke? Did you, you know, like he, he, is it episode three or four where he tells the story about the, the cab? Is that in four? I think, I think four. That's in, that's in four. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get to that, but you know, they're going to start to figure things. They, they've got to, they got to at some point start to figure out that he's not the same Jason who, yeah you know, they, they, they know and love. And so I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to play out and logically how they're going to, to figure it out, how they can do it. Um, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's really, it's really quite, quite intriguing. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, that ending of this episode three is just with the fingers. That's just, you, I was like, Ooh. oh, that was like, oh, when you see the fingers on the on the ground, and I was just like, oh, and does she's that change in the box, and does it change? And that's the whole thing. We don't really get that. Yeah, between we episodes three and four. Does yeah, I don't think we change? see much of. Yeah, I don't know if we see much of Dawn two in episode four. We we see other versions of her mm -hmm. in episode four. Yeah. But uh, we did, you know, I caught at the end and I, I caught it the first time I watched it, but I really keyed in on it the second time I watched it. That there's a, there's a couple of cues in episode three that we know that Layton is a different type of, of person. Um, and by the way, I mean, these actors, particularly Jimmy Simpson, Oh They're yeah, just killing it. Playing two different versions of the same person is is amazing. But uh, you know, at the end when the door shuts mm -hmm. and we cut to Layton, uh, Layton two, he's or well, let me back up. Earlier in the episode, he talked about the fact that he's spent billions making this box happen. Mm -hmm. You know that he's he's you know risking a fortune here to try to to you know, recoup those assets. He's, he's got to recoup that money somehow, yes. you know, and we, we hear him say something about, you know, along the lines of, well, you know, if we could find a cure for cancer, find a world that doesn't have cancer, what, how much would that be worth? You know? And then at the end, when Layton and Amanda, uh, Layton, when <laughs> Jason one and Amanda disappear. Yes. Um, we see Layton, telling them to get the box ready again. And he's grabbing the chemicals mm -hmm. and somebody says something to him, like, what are you going to do? Or you can't do that. And he's like, I have nothing left in this world. And so I'm, I'm really interested to talk more about him in the next episode because he's, he's, uh, he's at the end of his rope. He's like, I, I have nothing left in this world. I, this box is all I have. I, I, I 
and you're talking about Leighton at this point. Yeah. Right. Leighton, Leighton two. Leighton at the two. End, at the end, after Amanda and um, Jason one disappear, um, after the door is closed and they're, they're counting down the time, and he's like two minutes, 42 seconds. He's grabbing the chemical and he's shooting himself up with it. And they're like, what are you, what are you doing? And you can definitely tell his intent. Yes. Is he's going to go into the box and they're like, you can't do that. And he's like, well, I have nothing left in this world. You know what that reminds me of? And you'll laugh. Remember Time Cop with Jean-Claude Van Damme? (laughs) (laughs) It's been a while. It's been a while. but It gives me that vibes. And Mm -hmm. honestly, everybody, uh, uh, those listeners that are Panels to Pixels fans, uh, uh, podcast fans, uh, or, or Adrenaline Cinema podcast fans, we eventually will be doing Time Cop. But I get so many feels about this because I have to go back to the well of what I love in action movies, Mm -hmm. time, multiverse, everything. Yeah. And and in this case, in this show, it's a multiversal thing. And we get more of that as the episodes go by. So now, mind you, we're covering three and four right now. This is only the tip of the iceberg. As soon as we get into five and six, oh my goodness, it, it's yeah. gonna only get to get worse or even crazier. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited again. I I was all in on this the first couple episodes anyway, and I'm yeah. even more so now because it's it's really good. I uh, you know I'm I'm what is it? I'm hopeful that if they're going to wrap it up in one season, that they wrap it up well in yeah. one season. But if they don't wrap it up in one season, they better get Apple TV plus tends to give us at least three solid seasons for their shows. Uh, We'll see. We don't have much. I mean, all we have is Ted Lasso right now. No, Um, no, no. There's more Ted Lasso. We got servant. Okay. Servant. I I haven't watched all of servant, so I don't, I wasn't. And servant was one. They wrapped that up. Yeah. Silo. They've given silo a second, a second season. So we'll see how that, how that, comes out what was the one with jason momo where everybody was silent i forget the name of that yeah i didn't watch that one either no i didn't watch it like but they did or... apparently wrap that up okay so okay so maybe maybe they, they do have a track record of, of giving us three seasons so maybe if they give us three seasons of this show i think i could see it i could see it happening um uh, that way and that, then i'd be i'd be good i'd be good with that you know yeah. three three solid eight episode nine episode seasons this is uh, 13 episode is it 13 okay i i I, imdb only has it mapped out to nine right now so i didn't know how many as i could tell from my research it says 13 episodes so we got that and and uh what is it uh severance is also on apple tv plus severance has got a second second season coming yeah so so we'll we'll see how severance yeah you're right i guess we'll we'll see i'm i'm like i said i'm hopeful that they're they're going to get a second season of this show and we can continue covering it um because i'm 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 liking what they're doing uh they're they're the the pacing for me the pacing is good yes uh, right now i haven't watched episode five yet it is out there and it's available so as soon as we're done here i'll probably uh be queuing that one up yeah i uh, I have a lot on my list i've been working mm -hmm. a little bit uh but also i've been editing as well uh, mm-hmm. and as many of you listeners know i've been on multiple podcasts and it's very hard to do four podcasts at the same time <laughs> yeah well you know hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter for you and i you know i'm struggling with uh, some issues right now as well and uh, yeah so i i think uh, uh you know uh, just talking these episodes out really really helps and it does i you know i it's really, really good. I'm, I'm excited to talk about the next one because there's a lot in four. I don't have notes about it, but I've got a lot of thoughts about four. Yeah, um, same here. And, and we'll see. But uh, what else here in in three? You know, we have like I said, we have the dinner party. We have her kind of at the end of the dinner party when she's kind of coming on to him. He's like, "Are you drunk?" And she's like, "A little," you know. <laughs> and and you, you kind of see that her suspicions have kind of you know been allayed a little bit. So we'll see. You know, particularly when we get to episode five, we'll probably mm-hmm. see if those suspicions are getting peaked again because of what happens in four. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm tentatively. It was that dinner party that, like I said, I I keep going back to that editing. 
yeah. between the 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 questioning of Jason one and the dinner party is so good going back and forth. Because you can see the happening. difference between the two characters, even though they're the same person mm-hmm. in two different realities. And yeah. one trying to be the other. Yeah, it's it's very, very slight. It's very subtle what um Edgerton plays Edgerton, yeah, Joel Edgerton is doing. It's very subtle differences. It's not quite as as blatant as like, you know, Jimmy Simpson, it's you can definitely see the differences. Between yeah. the two Ryans, um, you can but that's see how good Jimmy Simpson is, though. <laughs> right? You can see the differences. Um, well, you could see when we had before Daniela two uh, was killed, we saw the differences there. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna see more of Layton in the next episode. Yes. So uh, it's 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 like the it's very subtle with with uh, Joel Edgerton, with the, the way he's playing both these Jasons, it's very, very, it's minute. Like it's, 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 it's so subtle that you'd almost not tell it, but like, there's a, what I, I think I caught this evening. There's just a different lilt to his voice. Like the, the, the way he talks. Yes. It's a little bit different between the two versions. Um, like I said, the, the Jason one has got a slightly softer tone. It feels like, and whereas Jason Two has got more of a of a harsher tone, he's edgier um, and more aggressive. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, it's, it's it's super super subtle, but it's it's there. It's just enough there to where I go, wow! It's so subtle. Two different people, but yeah. the same person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 so slight, but it's it's there. You can definitely see there's a difference, and just I. I I'm sure he's not going to get, they're not going to get any kind of Emmy nominations or anything. No, no. They just don't and, recognize that, but man, they should. And, and a caveat to that would be probably Orphan Black, even though the, mm-hmm. that's multiple personality. And now, you know, listeners, if you're not into it, please do so. Mm-hmm. Go watch that show. Uh, we had Tatiana Maslani, who did it in the first iteration in seasons that they had. Now we have. Kristen Ritter. Yeah, I haven't been able to pick that. I need to find figure out where to watch that. So yeah. um, uh the we had our own Jessica Jones mm-hmm. is now Orphan Black, uh the next level, as it were. So uh if you like kind of that whole feel, that whole dollhouse feel that I did with Eliza Dushku, which I loved because it was very different people that she had to portray. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it's it's the same person, but different multiple different personalities yeah i'm loving it but i'm looking forward to jumping into that show as -hmm. soon as i can i'm waiting for the first like five episodes to go in so i can binge watch it a little bit here and there and then have fun like i said i've got to find it gotta figure out where it's at so yeah Um. but yeah and and in case of this episode i did enjoy that the whole uh latent confront uh confronting jason one in the interrogation room you already mentioned it uh, knowing that he is not their Jason. Actually, Leighton actually realizes that at, at a certain point, and it doesn't really end well, and it was very confrontational. Mm-hmm. And Jason 1 doesn't know, but Leighton knows that he is not the same Jason he know- had known originally. And Leighton wants to know how the bo- box works because he has all the stuff for mm-hmm. it. And then they're at that point where it's confrontational and Amanda comes in and then uh, Jason telling Ryan about the box and what it can do. Yeah. Yeah. And the way, you know, the way Layton comes in and says something to Ryan about, you know, like, thank you, Ryan. But then he pulls him out. I, again, that's where I'm not sure where, what's going on with Ryan. What is his Ryan too? Anyway, what is his position there? Because, you know, he probably needs money. And that may be all it is, is he's just, you know, remember in that the first couple episodes, he's hitting up Jason. Hey, I did some work for you guys and I need to see some, some remuneration for that. You know, yeah. and Jason has no clue what he's talking about because Jason one doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how that relationship turns out, uh, particularly with what happens in uh, episode four. Did you have any quotes on this particular episode or no? I didn't not just the ones that I've, I've already, the one that I've already said is that late in there at the end, but uh, no, I didn't, I didn't jot anything down. Um, I, I have only a couple 
that would make sense. Uh, one being from Leighton saying to Jason, I'm just trying to help you remember the brilliant man that you are and this incredible thing that you created mm -hmm. at that point. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And then Leighton again saying, I take the blame for what happened. Hear me, Jason. I take the blame for what happened. You came back and we were not prepared. We were not prepared for you to be as unwell as you are. Mind you, they had three people disappear and he was the only one to come back. Yeah. And it wasn't until this episode, they realized that he's not there, Jason. So that's, Correct. that's, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Th that's good. That's, that's really good to pick up on that. Yeah. With that, we're, we're going to move right along. I don't have any additional notes regarding this particular episode, but we're going to move right into episode four, which is called corridor the corridor so um the synopsis for this particular episode is jason and amanda fight to stay alive within the dangerous corridor jason too makes some life changes and visits an old friend yeah this was another good one um you know it picks up uh pretty much right very close to where the the last one ended at least with uh, Amanda and Jason being in in the waking up in the box or in the in the corridor you know um and realizing that the you know yeah so it's it's really good it picks up right on and then we pick up the next morning uh with Jason 2 and Charlie and Daniela mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah, another really, really good one. Answered a lot of questions, started some more questions for us, but uh, we, we're we finally starting to see the multiverse uh, come into play here. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, I love how both Jason 1 and Amanda are trying to navigate through this box at that point mm -hmm. because it was a sudden rush and then they have somebody who's missing three fingers and those three fingers <laughs> is sitting there with them in the box mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to different realities at this point. Yeah. And multiple, I think at least a good three or four of them were apocalypses at different points. And they looked like nuclear apocalypses. Yeah. At me. least one, at least one for sure. looked like a nuclear kind of apocalypse with that ash falling out of the sky. And I kind of worried about like maybe radiation or something Yes, uh, with them when they, when those buildings started collapsing. And I was really concerned when, when we when it kind of cut back to them and it was it was all dark i was like are they back in did they were they able to get back into the box or are they trapped in that building what is it and then we finally figure out oh no they are they're in the corridor which mm -hmm. they, when you know when season when season when episode 3 ended mm -hmm. i i was kind of asking this question in my head about where is the box like located in all these different worlds and we find out in this episode that it's in the same place everywhere in every at the same universe. place at the same time of every universe right yeah. it's at the same whether no matter what around it is different it's in the same place in every universe so that's a that's a uh you know a fixed thing but then we get this corridor he mentions the fact that it's not really a corridor it's more of a manifestation of what's happening in, in their the brains box. yeah in the in the box of, of kind of a manifestation and so i think it's interesting that it took them a while to pick up on the fact that their thoughts were controlling kind where of where they were was, going yeah yeah and so when they had no thought of where they were going it just kind of they opened up a door to a random universe and like you said it was a you know apocalyptic kind of uh place like the one the one place that had no atmosphere it looked like the sun was expanding or something that happened to the sun yep. uh, was what uh, was what I, I perceived. And and so it's really, really kind of cool that we get this idea of this corridor. And then, of course, we have Leighton, too, also in a corridor somewhere, um, whether he's in the same corridor or it's a different. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little it's going to be interesting to see how he navigates that environment as well and and you know we saw at the end of the at the end of episode four he's not looking so good you know um and he doesn't have another person there to kind of bounce ideas off from and he's not the brilliant physicist that jason is so he's not un gonna understand he he's what not worldly when it comes to people mm -hmm. he's only worldly when it comes to science and he doesn't had to know how to navigate people in my opinion Whereas Jason yeah. one knows how relationships and, and interconnectual uh, 
uh, relations with like family, his wife, his son, mm-hmm. Ryan, anybody else who he works with, where Jason one excels at that, where Jason two knows the science of everything. Right. And- but I was saying, I was talking about Layton, the Layton. Two, oh, yeah, yeah, trapped yeah, like, in the corridor that he he doesn't he has no clue how this whole thing works and he's just kind of stuck there. That's and at so the very I, end. Yeah, at the very end. That's what I said. Yeah. That's why I said I ju- kind of jumped to the very end there. He's not looking so good because he doesn't know wh- how to navigate this. This, uh, this and corridor. I'm hoping we get to see him next episode on episode five, mm-hmm. where he stands. Uh, hopefully, he finds somebody. I'm hoping Jason one and Amanda at a certain point. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm not sure because you know the indication was that he's not a good guy. Uh, yet and and that's what I what I took from Amanda's attitude, her character in this episode four mm-hmm. is that she was legitimately wanting to get wanted to rescue Jason because she realized that this Leighton too is a bad guy and he's yeah. not. Um, and so she says, you know, in that when they open up the door and go into the world where they didn't make it into the box, she says something about, I'm not going to let you use this box or you do this or something like that. And then John shoots her, you know, yeah. shoots that version of, of Amanda and Amanda too, like is, dies is, and she yeah. sees her herself dying. Yeah. And Jason oh. one's got to pull her back and go, no, that wasn't you. That wasn't you, you know, yeah. and that's, that's what kind of spins her, spins her out. Uh, in a lot of ways. So I, um, you know, where, whereas she was talking about the fact that she was training these pilots and yeah. she didn't, she didn't train herself in it. So I was, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. And um, I, that relationship is going to be interesting to see going forward, how that relationship between Jason one and Amanda um, works, because we haven't seen Amanda in the prime world yet. We haven't seen a version of her. No, we, we have not won't. No. We, we might not because really there would be no reason for her to be involved with anything. Unless um, she was a worker for the company that. But there is no, that, that's no, because in, in the prime world, Velocity is ran by Layton's. Uh, for bottom. Ryan. No, back up, back up the Velocity okay. in the Velocity <laughs> in the two world mm-hmm. is Ryan and oh. Layton running it because remember in that world his father died and his grandfather gave him the business when he got out of college that's right. when we find out that he has billions okay but okay. the Leighton Leighton one okay his in that world his father is running Velocity Ryan just won the Parva okay and mm. is opening up his own company and remember Leighton one says oh Ryan came to me three months ago and wanted me to invest in some company and apparently it didn't it didn't work out and so he says I'm not investing with friends anymore because it gets messy yeah okay and he and when when Jason kind of looks around and goes well you're doing pretty good for yourself he says yeah my trust fund's doing well so he's a trust fund baby in uh. the, in the prime world he's just a trust fund kid living living his best life with the billions or however much he's got in his trust fund and his mm-hmm. his father is running the company, and his grandfather has just passed away. All right, just what if? What right. if Amanda was involved with Leighton at that point in that? I just first don't. World? I just don't see that. I don't see her in the prime world having any kind of involvement. I don't think really? there's any. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why she would, because Leighton it doesn't have anything to do with the company. He says I haven't spoke to my father in five years. It could he be. Have she to- could be completely devoid of what ever is maybe I, maybe maybe but still i i just don't i don't see them i don't see there any reason for them to bring her version in unless uh, uh, unless there's something unless jason too wants to try to find her for whatever reason i don't know why but but no i'm i'm hmm. whatever it's 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 all speculation this one we don't know yeah, it is speculation but it's it's what i'm but what i'm trying to say is there seems to be a bond forming between Jason one and this Amanda. And I think that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out going forward, particularly how long it takes him to find his world again, because he said something about, you know, we figured when they figure out the mechanism of how it works, that we have to think about something. And that's what just makes the connection. He says, then we can go home. But remember her home is not his home. But they have to be on the same wavelength mentally in order to make mm-hmm. that work. So, so I think this is where it's going to be. They're going to go through multiple different universes at this point yeah. because they're not meshing well. It's kind yeah. of all right to put it for those of you who uh, 
love kaiju movies. And if you remember, there was a movie where you had two people moving a robot and had two minds alike. And they had to beat up kaiju. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Go to run for your lives for that one. (laughs) No, and and it's, we're going to be, you know, because when, when Jason two brings in Layton into Mm -hmm. the corridor and he's like, he's like, I, you're, you can, I can control what's behind this door, but I can't control your mind. Your mind needs to be, you need to be clear. Don't, don't think of anything because you're going to mess up what I'm trying to do. Yes. So, so it's, it's, and obviously it looks like he took him somewhere where Layton's grandfather was still alive because he says something about he's still alive, you know, and he was so, he was so happy to see him. Oh, wow. Something to that, something to that effect is, is that's how he convinced, how Jason two convinced Layton one (laughs) that the box works. Yeah. You know, um, and, and then they and come on back top of to, that, the injections are a big, huge factor into it to concentrate the mind. Isn't, to make isn't it, it work. interesting that that she has injectors and Jason, too, has like lick drinking it like hmm. he like he and he and Layton drank theirs. Yes. Whereas she had injections. So obviously he's over the year that he's been gone. He perfected it. Yeah. He's better perfected this this serum. So. Again, I go back to that storage room we saw in episode two. He's been here for a while. Like you said, he's, he's been in this world for a year, over a he's, year, over a year. He's, he's been collecting all this stuff. He's got money. He's, uh, but, uh, so yeah, I, uh, uh <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see again, like I said, going forward, how, uh, how much, uh, these characters, uh, change and grow. Uh, what did you think of the whole max, situation max with the twin the twin that died charlie's twin that died oh yeah that did you did you understand all that what was going on there not Is really that... brief it through me okay so brief it to me. The, what i got in that second the second time watching i really keyed in on it and, and realized that so charlie had a twin brother had a, a, a twin brother named max and but max was was not healthy mm-hmm. and so max didn't live past whatever age he is in that photo i think they were identical because they look pretty that that photo i think they were must have been identical twins the, but charlie um lived and max died and that's where they said they they put some of his ashes in that tree and they go on the birthday every year to spend time at the tree jason too has no clue about any of this because you can see it on his face when yes. he comes home at the end of the episode and they're making spaghetti and meatballs, Charlie says it's Max's favorite. And you could see that Jason too has no clue who Max is. He's like, who and the I'm, hell is this? I didn't get that information because I couldn't even research it. You know? Yeah. And I'm wondering if, if that's going to be the thing that, that, uh, that they figure out that he's not their Jason. Um, but yeah, so yeah, because, because, you know, she says something about when they're, when she's talking to Charlie there at the tree, she says you were inseparable and they're kind of cutting back and forth between Jason one telling Amanda the story about Max and Mm -hmm. Daniela telling Charlie about Max. So they're cutting back and forth, um, between it and and you piece together what happened, uh, that uh, Charlie was at his hospital room all the time. And it just, he didn't survive that last surgery or whatever that last surgery was, whenever it was, he didn't survive it. Um, and like I said, Jason too has no clue what's going on there, but he's already, you know, he's like, he said in episode three, he's spending more money. Now in episode <laughs> four, he convinces Layton to give him some money. He buys this car. He's telling Charlie to run red lights. Yeah, no. yeah, that that whole teaching him how to drive, uh, his like idea of not knowing how cars work within that world too. What? I well, he, he was driving with Charlie, and he was just trying to teach him how to drive. No, he just told him to run that red light. He was like, oh, he was like, okay. he was, he was just, he was just, oh no, go, you can make it. And he's like, oh, it was more yellow than it was red. And I'm like, <laughs> it is, that's, that's, that's straight up aggressive driving type stuff to where yeah, that is, know, Jason, but... Jason one 
was telling him, you know, to slow down, stop at the red light. Yeah. yeah. In the very first episode, we got that with the driving. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm saying is is he's showing how he's different from the other Jason. It's not that he doesn't know how red lights, uh, traffic lights work. It just means that he told Charlie to run that light. Just like last episode, episode Mm -hmm. two, he told him to, you know, that, uh, that being in love is a negotiation. And that's not something Jason one would say, you know, that is true. So, yeah. So I, I think we're it, like I said, episode five is going to be interesting to see if we have any more of this stuff to where they start to suspect it's not there, Jason and see where it goes from there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, we get, uh, we get the whole snowstorm, which I thought was interesting. Like I was wondering how they were going to figure out where the black box was when he says, Oh, it's covered by snow. And, you know, the GPS is still working, but then it stops working. And then she realizes that the compass is all messed up because of the black box. But there's it seemed a little convenient for me that she had a compass and she was like, oh, the compass is messed up. And she's able to narrow down the black box. And then they dig through the snow with their hands and they're able to get back into the box. That seemed a little bit. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give him some grace on that one, but that seemed a little <laughs> bit, mm, come on, you know, they're digging through the snow with their bare hands and that box was pretty tall. So they had a yeah. long ways to dig, to get to the bottom of it. And how did they get to the bottom of it without the snow falling in on them? I, you, this, or or okay. getting frostbite or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it just seemed, it, it's a little bit okay, but we had to get them back into the box and we had to get the story about, the whiteouts in Argentina, you know, yeah. and so for him to have the realization that, oh, you were thinking about that when you opened the door and that's what brought us to this world that's covered in snow. And then he rem- he remembers, oh, I had just said there's a world out there where we didn't make it into the box. And then I opened the door and that's the world that we step into. So suddenly they realize that they're the control for the box. Yeah. So obviously Jason, uh, two, figured this out at some point we don't know how he figured it out how many times is, it took him to figure that out too yeah, by the way I, it's it's gonna be again that's one of those things i'm gonna be interested to see if they show us his if they give us a flashback of him uh, you know figuring it out the mechanism or if they've just given us enough now that we don't have to worry we don't need to see jason figuring it out jason two figuring it out um so i don't know and, what do you and, think well one thing that i did really enjoy oddly enough is Jason to walking out of his class mm-hmm. with the students and not willing to do the work based upon what is needed for their grade. He goes, who here has a laptop? Who here has this? What do you have up on your laptop? And he just walks out and just quits. Yeah. And just, just quits. like, yeah, nobody's got paper anymore. I, I can't. Yeah. Again, it's, it's him being so unlike Jason one. Correct. Yeah that it's it's going to be we're going to have to see how that how that affects him going forward just like when he tells daniela that he quit his job and she's like wait we didn't even talk about this and he mm-hmm. goes well, i think you should quit your job too and start painting again and she's like what you know i it, he's trying to change he's going them. back in time to where he remembered her from his timeline what he's trying to change them he's trying to change yeah. them into the people that he wants them to be not exactly who they are. yeah and so it's, it's again, I, I it's going to be interesting to see how this develops going forward, you know, when they figure out if he's, you know, that he's not there, Jason, how that's going to, how that's going to play out and what's going to happen with it. Yeah. I'm interested to see, you know, cause he didn't really, after it, it seemed like, except for going to see her the night before he left the Daniela, Daniela two, they really hadn't had much, much interaction but you know he did set her on that path of painting the alternate realities of things. So yeah, it's the the the, the what do you call it the the different path. He says the the he says that when he asked Leighton that same question, he says, "Do you are you happy with your life?" And Leighton's kind of like, "What?" You know, and he's like, "This is <laughs> I'm giving you I'm giving you the the path not taken, you know, yes. the chance to see the path not taken." And uh, so it's it again. He's 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 got Leighton now. He's got Leighton one. In his corner, obviously, Leighton one doesn't know he's not Jason one, but mm-hmm. it doesn't matter because they remember at the, in that first episode, he mentioned the fact that he and Leighton hadn't really talked in a long time. That is true. You know, until that night when Ryan won the Parva. So 
Yeah, it's uh, this episode five is going to be interesting to see how it kind of branches the the series and, and gets us to the next the next step and then gets us to six. Yeah. Well, uh, that's all I had for this particular episode. I have no quotes, no notes. So. Yeah, that's that's all I've got. It was this is I know it's a really quick one, but uh, we needed to get caught up here so that next week we can be a little bit more uh, fresh. And yeah, we'll fresh. give you two episodes that will be a little bit more investigative of our yeah. thoughts. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, those are our thoughts about episodes three and four of Dark Matter on Apple TV+. Plus. So with that, that ends that for that. But we're going to move right along into podcast recommendations. Uh, the only thing I've got is the same thing I said last week. Strange Indeed is going to be finishing up Sweet Tooth uh, Season 3. Uh, the Netflix show Sweet Tooth is is uh, coming out with this final season. That'll be this sometime this week. And, uh, so uh, tune in to Strange Indeed uh, and check out Paik and Rima as they uh, cover Sweet Tooth. And I'll probably be sending them in some live Steves for that one. Awesome. Uh, I would like to recommend a lot of from a lot of stuff from podcast at this point because I'm getting more involved. But obviously, you could find me on podcastka.com and you can find me on the Sandman cast as we're continuing our coverage on Dead Boy Detectives. And uh, Jamie and I are continuing on with that venture. I where are we now? What episode are we at? I don't remember. I think uh, it's episode, episode five. five. The- yeah, the case of the two dead dragons. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be out your way. By the time you hear this, it will already be out. And uh, Jamie and I will be covering episode six. And then still slaying a Buffy first podcast with uh, Penny and Kara. So you could check them out and run for your lives with uh, Paik and Daphne. And you might hear my voice on a future episode when they cover Godzilla minus one, which came out last year. So uh, my friend Rob Moda and Adam Gonzalez, who was uh, who are on uh, fantasy picks movie edition, which will be back everybody by the end of August. So uh, you could check them out on fantasy picks movie edition.com, but we'll be back with that, but you could hear me in the time being on, uh, Run for your lives. And then on top of that, you got uh, the the cast of us, which is covering season uh, a season two rewatch of The Walking Dead. Am I correct, Steve? Yes. Yeah, they're yeah. in season two. Should be finishing up season two this week, I believe. Yep. And uh, that's about it for uh, podcast recommendations. But we mentioned earlier about how you could actually send in feedback. So we're... Can you send your feedback? Well, you could just go to panels of pixels podcast slash. Well, no, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it wrong. Hold on. It's going to be <laughs> facebook.com forward slash uh, panels of pixels po- uh, podcast or panels of pixels, actually. And uh, or you could just send us an email which would be panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels to spelled out to pixels, the number one at gmail.com. You could write out a little texted email and we'll read it, or you could just record yourself and send it as an attachment on said email and we'll play it and we'll comment on it. Uh, we can be found at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram and uh we're on you youtube, just, we're yeah, on YouTube yeah, if, panels yeah. to pixels podcast as well give us a thumbs up there subscribe and you'll get notified whenever new episodes come out again that's panels to pixels podcast on youtube what he said <laughs> uh obviously uh, if there's a uh a rating for whatever podcast player of choice preferably apple Podcasts or spotify please do so put in comments Five stars are always appreciated, but please be honest. I always ask everybody to be honest because I'm always very honest. Where else could listeners hear us, Steve? Where could they well, can hear you? I uh, pretty much am here on Panels to Pixels, and then I send voicemails to various uh, podcastica shows that uh, our friends cover. Yeah, 
And you could also hear me as well on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, whereas we're continuing our coverage on Interview with the Vampire that's on AMC+, Plus, which is a collaboration podcast with Podcastica.com. So it's on House Podcastica if you get that feed. So uh, if you could send any feedback regarding that particular show, it'd be great. We're coming on episode four. Probably episode four will be recorded by now, but if you send in any feedback, we'll read it when it comes. So uh, look for me there as well. Fantasy Picks Movie Edition as well when we come back in August, like I said. But you can always go back and just go to fantasypicksmovieedition.com and check that out with all the previous episodes. Or just go to piratecoreentertainment.com to find all the other podcasts on Pirate Core Entertainment which has everything like Panels to Pixels podcast, Eternal Cinema podcast, as well as Fantasy Picks movie edition, and watched it in the 80s. So we're looking for the return of our friend Damien, and he'll be back hopefully in the near future, but he's doing his own thing. Okay. He's taking care of a lot of family stuff, so uh, we welcome his return once he comes back. But other than that, uh, that wraps up our coverage this week on Dark Matter on Apple TV+. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.